Whitestone is in Whitestone is in Hold on. Oh, I, thought, I thought Whitestone was more like up in the Bronx. I don't know. Yeah. I, I thought one was Charlie Shop Shop is in Astoria. And then the other one, Reaction, I thought it was more up the Bronx. Like, but I thought they had, I thought they had their own. Okay. Anyway. I am drunk. Because I didn't want to. Hello. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. How's everybody doing? Okay. Feeling like a mass force. I see that. Yes, and it comes with a button. I know. I got one too. I got three. Oh, showing off her seven train. Oh, that's nice. Lisa, are you going local or express? Andrew, curse Grife. There's no Curse Grife here, just plain old Grife. Mr. That's Double her new name, Curse Grife. Yeah, well, I'm calling you Commissioner Double A. There you go. There used to be a Double A. Yes. <laughs> but you see, if your middle name was, was had an A on it, I would call you Triple A. <laughs> That's some crazy angle Matt Shotkin has on his camera. You see the very tip top of his head and a, and a pole. A pole, Andrew? I don't see any a pole. pole. Oh, that's the curtain rods in my kitchen. Oi, Oi. too close. <laughs> Change the camera, yeah. oh my God. Or step back. There you are. Hey, Bert. Hey, I thought Bert. it was just your, Bert, I thought it was your iPad that was joining, not you. I'm on my iPad. I know, but it said Bert's iPad is. is, is... It's so smart. <laughs> Very smart. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it. Oh. Hey, Andrew, I have to tell you, I was, I was watching the board yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah, I said. The heck is calling me? Oh, wrong number. Well, Harry takes over the computer to play bridge. Uh, so I have to use my iPad, which I finally figured out how to work. So it's working. I have to take my iPad into the shop. It uh, apparently it's vintage. Vintage. Uh. Vintage. They're selling a new iPad for about three hundred and fifty bucks. That's well, I'm sure that that's what they're going to try to do. They're doing it, and it's totally, everybody says it's great. It and is great. There's only one addition you need to it. I don't know, it's capacity or something that adds a, another hundred bucks to it. But it also gets you eligible to join the latest um, software, I think. Yeah, no, I'm sure it's worthwhile when you have a, a vintage that doesn't work. Yeah. Well, yeah. it just suddenly stopped working. So uh, I'm sure it's because now they just want to send me, sell me a new one. Or they're sending you a subliminal message. No, they're, yes, buy a new iPad. Andrew, so <clears throat> scale of one to 10, how was the board meeting on your end? How was the board meeting? Yeah, scale of one to probably, 10. Probably, probably not as bad as next month's is going to be. <laughs> Why, Andrew? What's next month? Next month? Well, I'll be talking. You'll hear. <laughs> Matthew, that's hey. you? Wait a minute, that's Matthew? It's Santa yeah. Claus. He's early. No, I thought, you know, I thought it was Hanukkah and Harry. <laughs> He's not coming this year. <sighs> yeah. As, as, is, as is not the Thanksgiving turkey. It's going to be a, it's going to be a, a Cornish game hen. <laughs> and there'll be plenty of other turkeys. Andrew, are you a turkey? No. <laughs> what is with your camera, Matt? It's it's the oddest angles. My God. But well, Lisa's face is on it for the last three months. We haven't even seen his face. We've seen the second out of motion. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I second out of motion first. Let me see what our let me see, one, two, three, four. Only four members so far. Well, it's not even noon yet. 
I know. Well, it's 1158. It's getting there. Yeah, it's getting close. And it's, it's not raining in here, which it is outside. Careful, Bert. You might get rained on even when you're indoors. <laughs> right. Bill Gill said he'd be late. Yes. If he can join at all, um, he has therapy scheduled and it's a half, a half hour to 45 minutes away from where he's staying. It's in Allentown, so he's got to get there and then he has to come back. Hello, Kate. Oh, Hello, yeah. Kate. Another man. You see, I was right. Kurzgrenf. Yeah, now you can say it because he's here. Nice yes. shirt, Chris. Thank you. What do you think Andrew, you Andrew, did you bring your skeletal crew with you today? There you go. You mean, crew. Uh, Andrew, you mean, uh, did he bring his, whatever you just said, but Commissioner Double-A? Skeleton crew is uh, on, th on Halloween. We're a couple of days out from that now, Andrew. We are indeed. And it's going to be a chilly one, it looks like. No, I think cold. Bloody okay. cold. Bloody cold. We won't mince words. We'll mince pies, okay? Mm. Wrong holiday. Wrong holiday. <laughs> My building has uh, banned Halloween per the per the mayor's. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, they're they're they doing... Halloween yet. They're letting you in. I won't be here. Oh, okay. Um, they're letting. They're doing candy in the lobby. That makes mm. sense. So they're still doing Halloween, but just that you can't go upstairs. I love I love trick or treaters. Bill oh, Gill entered here. the waiting room. Hey, Bill! Great that you're here. Is that Bill Gill who just entered into the waiting it is. room? It is. I, I thought he couldn't make it. Hey, hey. there's Bill. Happy birthday, Bill! Yeah, happy birthday, man. Still connecting to audio. Yeah, give him a second, but I know he's it's here. Maybe the end plan. Are you looking at a um... Ron Troy? Who is that? Oh yeah, Ron Troy has been at a number of our meetings lately. Do you recognize his oh, name? Happy late birthday, Bill. Bill. Oh. And That's here's a... Trudy. Hello, it's Trudy. Of Hi, Trudy. course it is. Of course, of course it's Trudy. I think there are other people who call also, so. But we saw your, um, we anyway, saw the I, number, I, Trudy. We don't saw have the to hear number. my lovely voice the whole time, and I and I can hear yours. I'll put myself on mute unless I want to say something. And okay. just so you know, if I want to say something, I hit star nine, and yes. then I and I mute myself. Just oh, okay, okay. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Edith. And Edith, great. We have a quorum. We do indeed. We have Sharon's iPad. Sharon is iPad 105. Hi, hello. Hello. Oh, yes. Okay, I think we do. We do. We definitely do. do. Stuart is on. And... Gob's here. Gob is here. Gob is here. Bill, I'm not sure if you heard us all before. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Um, Lisa, I'll quickly mention my birthday is a week from Sunday. Happy, oh. early birthday. Happy birthday. We're going to tell what our birthdays are now. <laughs> oh, Scott is here too. Hi, Scott. Yeah, you know, Scott's here. Everybody. Oh, we definitely have a quorum. Absolutely. See, if you have Marisol, then we'll really be a full power. We're almost full, yeah. Well, we don't have Edith and we don't have Trudy. No, we have oh, both God. Edith and Trudy. 
Oh, we do. Okay. We do have so, three. Yes, we do. That's suicide you just said. Be careful. Uh -oh. Marisol is just is the only one missing. Yes. Okay. Then why don't we why don't we begin? We no, have a. Uh, fact that you've got me. Okay. Yes, I am we here. Have you. We knew. We knew okay. you were here. Somebody said that me. you didn't have me, so I am just saying that for the record, I am here. Yes. We we Thank see you. on the screen who's here. Thank you, Trudy. Okay. Edith on the screen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's let's begin, folks. We have a lot to talk about, as we do each month. Welcome to the October or Halloween version of Transit Riders Council. Um, we have a quorum, so that's great. Oh, and here's Marisol. Excellent. We're missing Sharon. No, nope. I'm here. Sharon. Sharon. Oh, Sharon's here. Okay. Yep. We have a full. Wow, this is fabulous. 100%. Thanks to everybody for coming. Um, let me give you a report uh, from things that I learned at yesterday's board meeting. Uh, no. Andrew, are we supposed to be doing the minutes and approving the agenda? We oh, was, well, actually, we could do that now that we have a quorum. Uh, how about a, an approval of the agenda? Could we get that? Make a motion. I so move. Thank you. I, I, I trust okay. there's no objections to that. And the, and the minutes, uh, any uh, corrections, additions, or an approval? A correction on the minutes. Go ahead. On uh, one of my, um, one of the paragraphs, you guys spelled my last name wrong again. It's not. It's G R E I F. Everything of else we have it is. correct, but just letting you know that's the only area. Thank you, Chris. We'll fix that. Mm -hmm. No problem. I'll fix it, Chris. Thank you. Okay. Andrew, so Andrew, with that correction, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes. All right. Second. Great. And can, we, um, can we vote on the bylaw revision now, since we have everybody here? I Why agree. don't we do that? Uh, do you have the exact language in front of you, uh, Lisa? I do, yes. So as you, you will recall, we made a motion at an earlier New York City Transit Rider Council meeting to uh, move this language for a vote. The, the language uh, would, that, would adapt, that would revise the bylaw or be in addition to the New York City Transit Riders Council bylaw says the New York City Transit Riders Council will recommend to the governor's office a candidate for the council's non-voting seat on the MTA board. In the event of a vacancy, the council shall nominate a candidate at a regular meeting of the New York City Transit Riders Council and the vote taken at the next regular meeting. And this was uh, to correct Lisa, the deficiency. How does this differ from what, what, was, what we've had before? Uh, um, you mean in terms of uh, moving a council member forward? Yeah. There, there was no language at all that said how to move the council member forward in any of the councils uh, to a vacancy, on to a seat on the MTA board. So then how have we been doing it? Well, we haven't had to do it in years. Oh. Um, and then we had to do it for the Long Island Railroad Commuter Council. Um, oh, and this okay. And language basically. And so then we we realized that we didn't have language for any oh. of the council meetings. So we, um, so we, we have sing similar language for each of the councils now. Okay. So this will all be, uh, after you all take a vote, uh, once, once, every, once it's approved, um, the, the bylaw revision will go up on the website for each of the councils. Well, since you answered my question and I thank you, can I move to, to approve this bylaw revision? You certainly may. Okay, I so move. Second. Mm -hmm. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone, anyone opposed? No. All right, the bylaw amendment is passed. Thank you. Okay, and have the other two councils um, voted on this already? Yes, Lisa, they have. The, both of them? They have. Yes, okay, so great. We'll, we'll update the website with the language. And uh, a name from, from the Long Island, uh, Jerry's name has been sent up, correct? Jerry's name has been sent up to the governor's office and he's even gotten his information package. So okay. there is some movement on the, uh, on the in that regard, although there is no movement on the members' uh, <clears throat> candidacies. Right. Okay. So uh, let me give you an update on many of the things that we learned at yesterday's board meeting. Um, the MTA has distributed almost 15 million masks mm -hmm. uh, 
which is which is really an amazing number when you consider how many people have been doing it uh, and where they've been doing it and and for how long they've been doing it. Fifteen million is is quite something. Um, so that's really a feather in the MTA's cap. Uh, it helps to stop the spread. Um, Lisa and Chris, uh, I know, have have been amongst those. I always had a conflict, but I hope to do it at the next one. Sheila did uh, as well. Oh, she, and Sheila did it right, of course. And perhaps uh, Kate. Sorry. And perhaps Kate as well. Oh well, I'm sure Kate has. Yes. Um, and they're usually very well received. Yes. <laughs> wow, this, yes. Per this person keeps leaving yes. and coming back. That's a bit much. Um, <laughs> yes, they. Um, yes, they're they're very well received. People are very appreciative, um, and especially they like the pink masks a lot that we distributed in October. This is my third time doing it. When you and give I them think, out, is there a choice of colors or it's always one color at that day? Well, th this past time there was a choice of blue or pink oh. and there were a handful of, uh, of white cloth masks as well. We, we should mention that it was pink because October was breast cancer awareness month. And Indeed. pink is the color for breast can you know, for breast cancer awareness. So I believe that's why they, they had the pink masks. It wasn't a case of boy girl or anything like that. Uh, you're, right. you're correct. And in fact at the board meeting yesterday, the members wore uh, wore pink masks. The, uh, I'm sorry, the um, not the members, the um the the uh, Pat and some of the MTA leadership. Um, I went to my two local subway stations, 77th and 86th Street, and they didn't have any. Is it possible for me to get one? Um, they, the, the booth agent is supposed to have them. No, no, yeah, they said ones. they were out of them. The pink uh, ones or the, the pink ones? The um, pink ones, yeah. yeah if, it, if you could get me a pink one, Lisa, I'd really appreciate it. We can, we can ask. I don't know. Kate, is there anything that you wanted to add about the mask force? Um, just to thank folks for their participation and, um, the, the pink ones were disposable surgical masks. So, um, I, I believe they've all been distributed, but, um, I'm not a hundred percent on that. They were like, if you could find me one, because I really just, uh, I do a lot of work with breast cancer, uh, information and everything else. And I guess they went, they went very quickly, which is good. But uh, I would really appreciate it if, if one could be held for me, if you can find one. Hello? We will, we'll, we'll, yes, we, we, hear, we, we will try, Trudy. No, it, everybody disappeared for a minute, so that's why I did hello. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yes, we'll thank you. Um, so once again, um, we've been told oh. that... Oh, now there's an echo. That's not good. Oh. But anyway, we've been told that the proposed, and they're not proposed yet, but should congressional uh, um, financial support um, not be forthcoming to the MTA, uh, it would lead, and the service cuts were to go into effect, which is 40% service cuts on the subways and buses and 50% service cuts on the commuter rails this would lead to a loss in the area of at least 450,000 jobs, uh, because as we all know, the transit system is the economic engine that moves people to and from work, makes <laughs> employers want to be here, et cetera, keeps our value in real estate. Um, it would mean massive losses to the GDP. Um, we actually just saw on the news today that GDP is up. Um, if you wanna keep that, upward trend, you better help transit systems all over the US because they are the economic engines of their respective regions. Um, the July plan, Bob, the, the chief financial officer, Bob Ferran told us that the July plan deficit has actually been lowered by about a billion dollars um, due to various savings in various places. Um, and he is in the process as is our, his people of identifying various toll and fare options for those hearings that are likely to take place in late November and December, unless something that we're not aware of happens. Um, <clears throat> there is some pushback among the board about the usual 4% uh, hikes, especially in this difficult time of COVID. Um, there is certainly a movement on commuter rail, especially to the 
uh, the furthest out zones about their rates and what those could possibly go to, although there has been a cap on the highest, uh, on the highest amount of, 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 of $500 a month. But um, there is a movement to not have uh, increases, um, but we will see what happens. Um, th those, those various fare options and toll options are being formulated as we, as we sit here. Um, and, we, and there will likely be a vote on a November plan in November, and uh, the final vote would be in December. Obviously, we will know a lot more. Um, the election will have happened. Uh, any kind of COVID relief plans will likely have happened by then, although that could wait till the beginning of the year, but we will know a lot more by the next meeting, uh, most people believe. Um, the capital program is virtually at a standstill, but certain things have, have moved forward. Um, seven accessible stations have been, have been uh, achieved since we last spoke and um, notable among those are Bedford Park Boulevard on the B and D and Bedford Avenue on the L, um, the Driggs Avenue of Bedford Avenue uh, on the L that was part of the uh, Canarsie tube work um, is, is accessible now. Um, it's great to see these, there was supposed to be a lot more and those are on hold. Sharon, are you raising your hand? Yes, the, the elevator is already broken at Astoria. At, at um, Astoria Boulevard? Yeah. Okay, let's make a note of that. Uh, I believe that, fix that's off a, like, a signal and they know about it, but uh, I will make note of that. And the, the one from the ground to the mezzanine was working and then there was no sign on it that the, the further up one wasn't working. So people would get halfway up and wheel their way down, whatever all their luggage and their wheelchairs. No and signage stuff. down below before you start. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks for that. Um, Andrew the, Christopher as, has his hand raised. He does? Okay, oh, I see there's two, there's two there. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, Andrew, regarding Astoria Boulevard, there's been complaints because system-wide accessibility has called in. There's been reports of power issues at that station. Also, so our uh, issues at Astoria Boulevard, NW. Yes, yes. We're talking they were about the working NW. on it this morning. There were a bunch of workmen yeah. there this morning but for something. Been, but this is not the first time they've been having this problem. We'll talk this, to stations. Thank you. Yeah, it's been going on for three weeks. So there's been alerts on it going in and out, in and out. Is that Deborah Greif and, there? Yeah. Yes, that is. Hello, everyone. I thought it was. Nice to see everyone. Yes. Yes, Hi, I'm the only one that will walk in. We'll, we will report that for sure. Um, Matt, do you want to say something? Yes, I do, Andrew. Um, the, uh, when you were talking about lower percentages of fair heights, that have any effect on Metro North? Of course. Um, this, this discussion is on all all the uh, operating agencies. This is for bridges and tunnels, New York City Transit, Metro North and Long Island Railroad. Whenever we do the every other year fare hike and or toll hikes, it, it affects all, all parts of the system. Okay. There are, there are some times when the base fare has stayed the same, but they've diminished slightly the benefits on the, multi, on the time based uh, pass. It's, you, you've seen that happen. So we don't know what's gonna happen yet. Okay. Uh, we will all be discussing that. Um, um, Commissioner Schwartz made it very clear that uh, it isn't business as usual right now. Okay. Um, so also ongoing capital work has been a uh, replacement of badly needed tra uh, new track on the Archer Avenue line at, at Jamaica Center and at Sutphin and Archer. That work is ahead of schedule and should be done uh, I believe next week at some point, an e-service to Jamaica Center should resume. <laughs> there will still be some e-service going to 179th Street, uh, but the largely e-service should resume to, uh, to Jamaica Center, Parsons Archer, um, the first week of November. Um, there's work going on at the 207th Street and Coney Island Yards. Uh, that is important work, um, especially if we want to keep our rolling stock in tip top shape. Um, if we do not get 
uh, federal financing uh, that we have been pushing for, that everybody has been pushing for, it will have a severe effect on the capital plan. This was a $51 billion capital plan. Nothing gets cheaper the longer you wait. And if we keep putting off these badly needed uh, improvements on signals track, rolling stock, stations, accessibility, we are, we are gonna be way behind the eight ball. Uh, we just can't keep borrowing our way out of this. We're moving, we're moving to the point where we are in excess of 20% debt service. We, when Freddie Ferrer was chair, he often said, you do not want to go above 19%. And we're <laughs> likely, if we keep this up, we'll be closer to 25%. We have applied to the uh, municipal credit facility, a loan program for another $2.9 billion, which could take us through into parts of January, but not much beyond that. So <clears throat> stay tuned for all of that. <clears throat> um, one of the things that we learn every fall is that it's leaf season and this means problems for the commuter rails. Uh, it makes for slippery rails and trains can't break the same way they can break obviously on dry rails without leaves under the wheels. Um, there are special laser trains that are treating uh, wheels that have been flattened by one for one reason or another and uh, that that is going very well on the long island railroad so uh president ang of long island railroad does not expect many uh leaf delays this fall um he also reported that uh ridership is up to 28 percent of normal however 50 percent of normal on weekends that's a very good sign. He believes that people are comfortable enough to return to uh, the Long Island Railroad. And he also reported that 96% of the railroad is now PTC ready. He expects the last 4% uh, um, to, to take place soon. They are working with Amtrak uh, in the Harold area and other things, but um, 96% is, is, off, is awfully good at this point. Uh, remember, we're supposed to be at 100% by the end of this year. Um, Kathy Rinaldi, president of Metro North, reply, uh, reported that the ridership is up to 23% of pre-COVID, not quite as high as the Long Island. Um, the Hudson line is down 74% of uh, uh, ridership. The Harlem line is down 76%. And the New Haven line is down 78%, which surprised me a little bit since the New Haven line is normally the heavier ridership of all three of the lines. Um, the weekends, they are carrying 46%. So again, weekend ridership appears up on commuter rail. Please, could they restore the weekend Harlem line to Wasaic? <laughs> Yeah, Please. the last I heard, Sharon, was it was after Isaias and all of the down trees and branches was the reason they weren't running uh, weekend yep. service to Mosaic. But we will inquire again. It should be Thank back. You. The Waterbury branch of, of the New Haven line was recently restored. Um, so I just don't know why why Wasaic yeah. can't be. But I will find out for sure. Um, West of Hudson ridership is down 80% on, on mm -hmm. Metro North. That's not a surprise. Um, that that would be done more than the others. It doesn't run as frequently and is not as populated uh, an area. Um, but Metro North is now 100% PTC equipped. So that is a very good, very good news. Um, you have all heard this, I am sure, but it bears repeating because it is so exciting. Both Metro North and the Long Island Railroad are experimenting with um, a new kind of air filtering, electrostatically charged particles are now removing not only COVID from, from the air, but even all germs, even germs like the common cold are being, um, are being filtered by this. this. This would be a game changer if this is successful. You can be sure, and we have been told it could be incorporated into subways and buses but if this kind of technology proves successful and thus far the reports are really good, you would wanna put this kind of thing in, in your indoor ventilation. I mean, this, is, this would be a game changer for sure. So we wish Metro North and the Long Island Railroad all the luck in the world and, uh, and the science in the world 
that this that this air purification pilot really does the job. So the New York. Was, it's the um, it's the equivalent of a MERV sixteen, and it yeah. goes it, it works in accompaniment with the existing air conditioning. Or right, a, which, uh, which means it can be put on any. And we are, we're already safer on a train or bus because the air is is refreshed so many times per hour compared to like an indoor environment. If if this is incorporated into it, you are really in good shape. Mm -hmm. Um, so this New York is the only place in the country right now that is experimenting this technology. Um, I hope we're a leader in this. We've been a leader in other things as well. Um, why is New York the only one doing this? Uh, don't know why. It's um, the. I was at the I, launch. I was at the launch of this um, when they announced it at Grand Central. It's a NOR. It's NOR, isn't it? It's NOR, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it was an idea that. Uh, it was an idea that, that the Metro North chief mechanical engineer worked on with NOR um, mm -hmm. to develop. It's being tested. It could be put on the entire Metro North system for $13 million. They just have to make sure that it works, but it's, they're the first in the nation. It, it will probably roll out to others um, once as they see the success, uh, mm -hmm. but they're doing it here in partnership. I believe that they also uh, one or, or involved in the transit tech, uh, in the transit tech lab um, efforts. It's needless to say that the air conditioning on Metro North last summer when my father and I rode it stank. Last summer. Last summer. You mean summer of nineteen or summer of twenty? Summer of nineteen. Oh. Well, um, don't know what car equipment you were on. Uh, it could have been a fluke, um, but um, I've I've ridden it and I've not experienced that. So, uh, when you when you when you see something like that, record the car number, please. Okay. So we can report things like that. Um, you've all heard about some high-profile crimes in the subway system, some pushing, uh, and things of that nature. Uh, of course, you heard about the uh, derailment at Fourteenth and Eighth. Uh, where a hero uh, ran after and held uh, the perpetrator who had put some some me metallic objects on the track and derailed the train and smashed the platform. But there have been some pushings, and uh, both the chairman, uh, the chairman, uh, what's going on, Miss? Hmm. The chairman uh, today uh, in the clips, uh, and I guess issued a press release yesterday asking for the police's help in. in stopping these crimes um, and, and uh, interim president Feinberg has also commented um, with, with lower ridership, the fact that the crime rate is steady means that it's too high and we must, it, it's still safe, absolutely. Uh, I've been riding a lot and I've noticed that people seem to be fine and wearing their masks and social distancing. But I've also had, a, had some, some talks with police officers I've seen and, uh, and I've mentioned of the rampant fare evasion and the police officers have told me that they're more interested in, in crimes than in actual fare evasion. And I've said, do you really believe that the people committing these crimes are paying their fare? If you stop it at the turnstile, you're stopping a lot of this crime. And I had a talk with the IG, Carolyn Pacorna yesterday, and she agreed and some of her staff agreed. And we, there has to be a new, uh, formula, a new calculation of, of fare evasion, which is what the IG is pushing for and which I wholeheartedly agree with. And um, we, we need to get people to not only feel safe from COVID, but safe from each other and uh, absolutely feel safe. Um, if, if there are people that need help, we need to get them help, but they, they cannot be living in the subway system, obviously. Sharon. Sharon, you're on mute. I don't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Now I hear you. No, nope, now I don't. Oh, man. Wow, what happened to Sharon's mic? Unmute. Yeah, unmute. Sharon, unmute. You can, okay. there you go. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. Tuesday at 59th and Lex, there were people waiting for someone to open the, the slam security gate. gate. And then yep. seven people went in. They just wait, they lurk outside. I Sharon, mean, it's, it's ironic. 
I was on the phone with Chief Della Torre at the 94th Street end of 96th and Broadway. And while I was talking to the chief, eight people went through the slam gate. I, I determined later that that slam gate did not lock. I reported it, it is now locked. Um, but when I saw a police officer there, I told him I was really thrilled to see him there because this was a sieve, this particular location. He said, while it's locked, it is still only a magnet that is holding those closed. And anybody, if you get two or three people to smash into it, it will open the gate. So we have a problem, clearly. Um, it, it, it's now, it's all walks of life now. People in suits, grandmoms, kids. No, this was... And, and as, as the Inspector General and I were discussing yesterday, we've discovered some really artistic um, and graceful moves. You can you can actually bolt over the turnstiles and you almost don't even realize somebody has done it. They're that good. So yeah, so if what I and what you saw, Sharon, is repeated 100 times, let's say, throughout the system because there are 472 stations and thousands of fare control, fare entry areas, just think of the money that's being lost. And you know who this hurts the most? It hurts the poor because that means more frequent and higher fare increases. That's what that means. It's not good. Um, so let me go on. Um, you probably heard yesterday. Um, Andrew, sorry to interrupt. I was. Go um, ahead, Andy. I wanted to make a comment about safety on the Q46 since we're on the topic of what's going on here. So um, the business owners in Glen Oaks are concerned about emotionally disturbed people from Creedmoor down on Union Turnpike. And we're getting, a, this was before the pandemic. And I noticed this a lot when I was leaving work at Long Island Jewish. Every time I took the 1.50 PM westbound bus from Long Island Jewish to Kew Gardens, we would always see these emotionally disturbed people get on the bus. It's concerning me, it's concerning the other passengers. And I've been hearing complaints from the passengers who have been trying to leave the hospital off peak heading westbound, trying to head home. They are concerned about this issue and we want this issue of safety on the Q46 addressed as soon as possible. What is the, What exactly, are they attacking people? Are they threatening people or what? They're just making the passengers feel uncomfortable. Because they are doing what exactly? I don't know, they're, they're just telling me they're making them feel uncomfortable. And this is on the Q46 in the Creedmoor area? In the Creedmoor area, yes. And I will mention the last time I think I was on the Q46 back in March, there was a guy at the bus stop on Winchester Boulevard, and I think I even caught it on tape. The guy was singing Lucy in the Sky by Elton John. Actually, this is by the Beatles. Not by the Beatles? Right. Yeah. <laughs> was it Elton? I'm yeah. pretty sure it was Elton John. No, he, no, he took Beatles. it from the Beatles. Oh. He took it from the Beatles. Besides Believe me, that was a Beatles. Album. All right. But one last point. Um, was he good? There have been men from Creedmoor loitering around the premises by Little Neck Park Bay and Union Turnpike. So just bringing that on the record. That's how I heard about this. Um, have, have you reported this to any elected officials in that area of Queens? Not really, no. But How about the I, community board? Community board 13, if um, if I get any more reports, and especially when I go back to work sometime next year, I will let community board 13 know about this. Yeah, you should still let them know. They, they accept phone calls or emails, I'm yeah, sure. I will definitely let community board 13 know about this. Yes, again, I, do to... expect, I do expect to get reinstated back to my department at Long Island <laughs> sometime in 2021. Okay, well, I mean, Andrew, you know, I'm sure the community Andrew. board has oh, a contact. Chris, yeah, I want to let Chris go because we're waiting for Al to come on. Um, Chris has his, Christopher has his hand. Yeah, uh, one thing I just want to add, so since I wear two hats, as well as Debbie can bounce with it, the one thing you've got to be careful is those, those individuals, when you just mentioned Winchester, that's near the Bernard Fine Center in Queens. And the people there for development disabilities, they are, they are actually, you know, it's, you got to be really careful. I'm glad you're saying emotionally disturbed, but remember there are persons, there are people with disabilities. But there, last time I was on the Q46, when I do have to go to the uh, meeting in Queens, they're actually, this is, this is, this is before the corona. Right. They can sit there, but I'm not saying 
No, there's nothing wrong to bring it up. Right. All I'm saying is these are people with disabilities. If an on-fence center is right there, that's something that, you know, Correct. passengers now are going to have to face the fact that they pay their fare. We don't need, you know, they if they have a problem, that's why we have another bus comes in. And you just got to be a little more, uh, people got to have a little more patience and show respect. Because show consideration. Right. And consideration. Um, Sorry, but that is not called right, for. This is Trudy. Can I can I say something about this? Because I, as many of you know, I have been involved in the ment in the whole area of mental health for years and years and years. And I had a sister. My late sister, a long time ago, was a patient at Creedmoor. And this problem, I'm I'm putting the word problem in quotes about about patients when when they are on official leave from or being transported from Creedmoor and taking city buses, there is a lot of discrimination, whether it's spoken or unspoken, about right. about somebody with mental with with a mental illness condition. And I would strongly suggest that this before this be brought up, that you find out who is making the complaints, what the basis of their complaints are, because when you said that there are some men from Creedmoor hanging at bus stops, I mean, that is that is clear discrimination as far as I'm concerned, if I hear something like this. So this, this is a very delicate uh, can I finish, please? This is a yes, very please. delicate and, India, and important issue, and it's discrimination, and it has it, it still exists. It has existed for years and oh. years and years, ever since there's been Creedmoor and around other mental health institutions. So told, tread very carefully with this issue. I have been told that business owners are not allowed to call 911, 311, they have to call Creedmoor directly when they see these type of issues. Okay. But what do they see exactly? Okay, so this is, is this have to do with situations on transit? Because if this is a community issue that you're raising yes. concerns about, then uh, if you can't just say somebody feels uncomfortable because people are on a bus. So if there's, if there's Which a crime- Which is why I asked the committed, nature of the, of the, of the offense. Yeah. You know, oh, well, one time, I think this was back in 2019. Well, we need to talk about what's happening now. Um, oh, well, we need to move on to nothing another current, topic. nothing current. But yeah, Andrew, again, if I see any more issues, I will let Community Board 13 know. This that was going be. on in 1980 and in 1990, not just 2019. Yeah. I am saying to okay. tread very carefully Lisa, Lisa with, with making on. this an issue for us. Yeah. Great. Okay. okay. We thank got you, it. Trudy. Thank you. And thank you, Trudy. You're right. Thank you. I'm going to put myself um, on mute. Okay. Um, so I'm sure folks saw the news, but um, apparently Accessoride is moving to um, a broker type car service. Um, yesterday, um, some procurements were passed for various car services, uh, four or five of them. Um, broker car service will reduce the MTA's cost of providing Accessoride. Many, uh, many groups that, that use these services are a little worried about the, the, uh, the quality of the service they will receive as a result of these new companies. Um, and uh, Victor, uh, board member Victor Calise was upset that, um, oh. that um, some cab companies who had previously provided the service will no longer be providing it. Um, we are, they are looking into these into these problems. Um, it is not a guarantee that service will deteriorate with these broker services, but um, everything is being looked at very carefully. And I'm I'm guessing that these these four or five new car services will be on their best behavior to show that they can provide the service in a in a humane and qualitative manner. Uh, if they want if they want these these contracts to continue. So that should save the MTA some money on Accessoride. Um, all kinds of money savings are being looked at from various situations. This is just the latest one of them. Pretty much that's all the news from yesterday's board meeting. Uh, the November meeting will of course have much more uh, news on the MTA's finances, what we have or have not received from Washington, whether it looks likely that we will or will not receive. Um, Yes, um, Andy just put on the message about curb. Uh, Board Commissioner Calise raised the issue of curb because curb has been very well received 
by the disabled community and uh, many would like to see them continue. And as you know, the car, the car services like curb and cabs have done really poorly during COVID. Um, so we certainly don't want to see curb go out of business. Um, I think that's all I have from the board meeting. Um, Lisa, did you want to make any additional comments? Excuse me. Um, it was uh, following the board meeting, there was the, the Q&A with the reporters, um, yeah. as, as there always is. And there were some great questions. Uh, there was one question that was asked about uh, the 4% fare hikes for next year and whether they will continue to be pursued given the, you know, in light of, in light of the um, financial and political climate. And, you know, the answer is we're, we're looking at all the avenues. We have to really wait to see what's happening next week. To that end, um, oh, I'm sorry, there was also a, a great question about, from, from a Columbia journalism student who asked about uh, different technologies and the status of those technologies in cleaning and disinfecting the system. And Pat Foy was very well spoken on what seems to be working better than some others and what's going to be pursued. Ultraviolet light seems to be working well, um, but they need without, to be able without to, people. <laughs> well, without people on subways, but yeah. it is in use on with the new ventilation system for Metro North and Long Island Railroad because it's in a sealed container ah. that, that is as part of the ventilation system. Um, and so that's an interesting change there and some uh, some additional technologies they are looking at. Uh, we as PCA staff are continuing to work very closely with national and local advocacy organizations uh, in support of federal funding and 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 with Trudy, thank you Trudy. Um, and you know in, in terms of expressing the importance of, of federal funding to what it means to transit, uh, Andrew submitted a letter to the editor to the New York Post uh, in support of an editorial that they wrote um, about the importance of federal funding that has not been published, unfortunately. Um, but we did want to make sure that that got out there. So, you know, the president is now talking about uh, a, a, a stimulus package that will be voted after the that will be voted on after the elections, and that's something that we've heard is possible. Uh, as happening in December, November, December. Um, but what comes to fruition remains to be seen. So, uh, you know, there's a, there is a lot of talk and, and about uh, what happens next in any transition, should that happen um, and timing. But, you know, the, the MTA at the bottom line is needs money now. Uh, Bob Fran did say that he, that the budget could be amended should it be passed. Uh, with cuts, the, the budget vote will take place in December to include the fair hikes and the fair hikes, the 4% are included in the amount uh, of the, in the budget that, and the revenues that the MTA has considered for 2021. Um, so any changes can be adapted uh, with budget revisions, which is, I guess, good news, hopefully you know, the, hopefully the good news is that $12 billion falls from the sky into the MTA headquarters. Um, but realistically, we don't see that happening anytime soon. The MTA is also looking at other ways to consolidate and to reduce their expenses. Um, and that includes bringing two external or two um, agencies from within the MTA back into two Broadway just so they can get rid of a couple of leases and save funding there. So, uh, you know, the effort continues apace, um, but basically it's through the end of the year, there seems to be sufficient funding, um, but just because um, the election will be over doesn't mean that we're gonna stop uh, pursuing every avenue for federal funding. We've and, also and had a- pursuing, And they're pursuing of the continuation of because ridership is down and there's a 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. shutdown, there's continuing uh, progress on various sections of track and signal work. Um, the 53rd Street E and M tunnels mm -hmm. will be uh, will be will be um, re-signaled or or something. Uh, I, I heard recently 
um, to take advantage of another geo that's that's going to close the 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 fifty third street tunnel. So might as well do as much as you can. You know, there's work on the DNNR uh, switch north of Atlantic uh, Avenue. Um, they're doing all kinds of work, the Lexington Avenue line in Brooklyn. I mean, just all kinds of work happening now while they can. Right, they're doing all kinds of work, but they're also putting off all kinds of work because oh, they don't sure. have the funding to go forward. So what anything that was yeah. already funded in the 1519 plan or that's receiving Sandy money is going forward. We, um, Bradley and Gov will be uh, looking at and Sheila will be participating as well, looking at um, mm -hmm. the concerns, our concerns about uh, what resiliency projects are not moving forward because of, of funding. Um, so that's something that we are, it, it's just getting underway. We've also reached out to as and I believe I mentioned this at our last meeting, um, to Assemblywoman Pollan's office to have a conversation about the gas tax. So her staff uh, got back to us today with some additional information um, that we need to get that we want to talk to them about. So uh, we'll be setting up a call with some of the assembly staffers um, to figure out their their numbers, our numbers, how all the numbers can come together. And that will help us to be able to come back with a, um, a, an accurate um, recommendation uh, as, as uh, the uh, state legislature convenes next year. Yes, that's good. And depending on what happens in Washington, obviously we may get an okay on the environmental impact statement that's needed to pursue and continue or initiate, I should say, congestion pricing. Lisa, may I suggest that since you did a letter to the editor of the Post, which usually falls on deaf ears, but, and since you, the transit group has been, you and the rest of your nationwide group, that there will be, no matter what happens next Tuesday, um, there will be, they, at least they say, and the White House says, that there will, op there will be a continuation of the negotiations with Nancy Pelosi. And Nancy and the, con and, um, the, uh, the ha her delegation from the House have been most supportive of getting money for infrastructure slash transportation. It might not hurt for... Well, for us, but I think better from the nationwide group to send an, a letter to Nancy thanking her for all of her efforts and encouraging her to go on ahead with the negotiations as soon as uh, next, right after next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if the, your group has done anything direct to Nancy, but I think it it couldn't hurt. Uh, thank you. I'll, I'll share that with them. They have... Um... We have collectively signed on to written and with a, a large national um, signatory group signed on to letters to Nancy Pelosi thanking her for her efforts and continue urging continuing conversations. But I think oh, post election, okay. I, I hadn't heard about that, so I just think it's important. And what we might want to do is send a letter to the New York congressional delegation thanking them, all of them. You know, um, starting with Hakeem Jeffries, but but the whole group, uh, um, thanking them for their efforts on behalf, working with Nancy on behalf of the MTA again, and making all of these letters public, so you, because you say you've done you know letters to the editor. You might want to just CC and for our letters, whatever we do, also make copies to the editorial boards of um, you know Times News. Post and Newsday, very important. That also Newsday. Yes, thank you. Um, we we uh, Newsday did run a letter to the editor that uh, the LIRCC wrote, which was good. And the reason that we sent to the Post uh, in particular was because they they did run an editorial in support of federal funding, which um, was a little surprising, but very welcome. Um, so we no, will, but what I'm saying that. is that we write directly to the whole New York congressional delegation oh, we thank do that them too. and CC yeah. all of the editorial boards of all the newspapers. Yes, we will do that. Um, we will there, do that. there are some additional activities that are being planned with uh, Representative Jeffries and with Kirsten Gillibrand 
in the coming weeks also to continue to keep um, the eye on the prize and Adriano Espaillat uh, as well, who's been very vocal about this. So we will- um, I'll Just include the whole congressional delegation so it doesn't look like any one person is being singled out. I mentioned Hakeem only because he is the, like the leadership. You know, he's now the number five ranking member of the whole House of Representatives. So that's the only reason I mentioned him. Okay, we'll do. Thank you. Okay. Um, Matt Matt Shotkin has his hand. Oh on. yes, Matt, go ahead. Matt, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah, did the Second Avenue subway funding change because of those additional guidelines? Yes, it's on hold right now. Yeah, phase phase three is on, on hold right now. Phase two. Phase, phase two, two is on excuse hold. me. Yeah. Phase three is really on hold. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher D. Greif has his hand up as well. You almost spilled that, Lisa. Uh, Andrew, uh, part of your report also just want to say that when we do the uh, mask walk, I have to say, yes, it is fun. Uh, but one thing I will add is I hope they've been working on a little more community people because uh, when I was doing Times Square on, on I'm going to say, first day on Tuesday, they, we were short by at least four people. We only had three people. And it would have been nice if they stopped worrying about just getting eight people. They could have had a lot more people, especially in the Times Square area, because if you're going to travel, say, the seven train from Times Square to 74th, and come back or go into one of those lines. Those lines are not small. They're huge. Like Brooklyn, Atlantic Avenue, there's only one station for Atlantic to do the mass course. If you're in Atlantic, you have to go all the way to Coney Island. And then the time you get to back there into Coney Island, it's not just two hours and 30 minutes. It's like almost three hours because you have to spend- Well, Atlantic also has several platforms. <laughs> yes, I, and you, I know, you know why I didn't have to bring that up. You knew that one, but- yeah. The one thing I'm asking is also is it, when they do the mass force team, they need to bring another district area, like maybe one in Coney Island. Uh, I know there's one in the East New York Broadway Junction, but in the South End of Brooklyn, that's a long trip because that could be almost 20 to 12 stations that Good they point. could actually they could get done. It's Good point. Because that's like we need to have more community, more of the community people want to do this. They love it. They forget about wearing this shirt. They just love helping people out. Excuse me, can we add in the reason we need to add like Chief Sepe because we have three, four bus lines that go in there as well as- Six at six at, at Kings Highway. King Highway. <coughs> we, yeah. Really in certain areas, we're still, we have a lot of foot traffic and they're being, this, this part is being ignored. Over at Bay Parkway, it's been ignored too on the D train. Okay, we will report that. Thank you. Um, something I failed to report, but is really exciting is the MTA's new live subway map. Um, I have been working on it with, um, mm -hmm. with Chuck Gordonier and with Sarah Meyer. And um, it's very exciting. Um, in many ways, it's an improvement. There are lots of errors on it that I'm working to get uh, corrected. Um, such as you know signs on the app that say w to brooklyn yes there are three or four runs of the w that go to brooklyn but then if you look under it you can see it's ending at whitehall street south ferry so obviously it's not to brooklyn they also are listing um, arrival times at terminus stations when it should just be departures very confusing for a lot of people and there's some incorrect destinations like there's some places in the app that say like if you click on marcy avenue um It'll say uh, to Middle Village and Jamaica for both the M and the J trains. And of course, the M doesn't go to Jamaica and the J doesn't go to Middle Village. So little quirks like these, but I hope these can all be worked out. Um, it, they, it is obviously accurate on uh, where it's showing you trains, uh, the A division a little more accurate than the B division, but uh, it's a very exciting development. It is a beta. And they're very clear in saying that, and we hope to get it much improved from where it is right now. Um, so um, 
I see that our guest has arrived. And uh, for those who have had an opportunity to try out the Omni system, it is so much faster mm -hmm. than the MetroCard, particularly on buses. It's like three seconds faster uh, to, to, uh, to tap and go. Um, obviously, all, fair, all ticket types are not available yet on Omni. Uh, Al will be telling us, I'm I, sure. I, I, I logged in early. I got about five minutes. I just have to do something, but I will come back less than five minutes. Okay, Al, thanks. Uh, but obviously, um, that is coming. Uh, Omni is a very exciting development. Um, it doesn't have a stripe that wears out like Metro cards. You don't have to keep cleaning turnstiles like you do with Metro cards. Um, the Metro card is probably 20 years out of date. Almost everybody has gone to tap. Um, this can be used on a phone, on a credit or debit card, on an MTA issued uh, Omni card, which will be coming. Obviously, both will coexist until 2023. But um, I'm expecting uh, in the first quarter of 2021 when time based and all types of, of uh, tickets are available, fares, I should say, are available on the Omni system. That's when we will really see Omni take off. But it is it is being expanded rapidly. It should be an I'm, I'm taking Al's thunder, I'm sure. It should be in every uh, bus and subway by the end of this year. Um, so while we wait for Al to come and give us the latest update. Andrew, um, I'm just going to jump in one second. I'm going to send everybody a link to the report that the Rudin Center sent out yesterday about okay. the economic uh, economic effects of, uh, what, of what would happen with the service with the service cuts that are would be anticipated mm. without funding. Yes, quite horrifying. Ruth, are you going to screen share that? I'm going to do that right now. Okay. Give us something um, to read to go to bed by. Uh, excuse me, Andrew. I will say something else. Um, the the heretofore um, despised and not very good R179s um, are back in service. Um, I've seen them on the C, on the A, and on the J, and um, they seem to be running fine. Um, the climate is great. I don't know if you've noticed this, but an awful lot of subway trains have really powerful air conditioning still on, even though it's cool out. And um, I see people shivering and um, opening <laughs> windows to try to get it a little warmer. Um, opening windows is actually not a bad idea to recirculate the air, I suppose, but... Um, I've spoken to uh, Frank Jacecki about it and uh, he will be looking at it. We may be unnecessarily spending a lot of money to continue to really, really air condition when um, last evening I was on a train that was the perfect temperature. So I don't, I don't buy that it's always uh, air temperature regulated because some of them are much colder than others and they're traveling in the same temperature. But um, we are looking at all of these things um, I've also noticed some uh, signage issues that we are fixing. And um, we are also looking at various things with, um, with an attempt to speed up subway trains. Um, There's some age old speed limits that have been imposed that some of which have been fixed and trains are flying down the tracks, um, obviously. The faster we can, the more faster and safer we can make the journey, the better because that means trains can be turned around and sent in the back in the opposite direction on a on a much more timely basis, um, assuming there's no delays. Um, let's see, anything else? Andrew, there is one more thing you left out. What's um, that? Uh, as you know, system-wide accessibility, uh, they have put out a newsletter out regarding the, you know, not just the maps, but they do have a lot of new things they have added in. And each month they do have a system-wide member, uh, I'm sorry, act up member each month. This month was me this month. And, and if you noticed on the new live subway map, yeah. uh, if you touch the uh, accessible symbol, it'll show you every station at a glance. What it doesn't yet show you is a station with only one direction accessible, but that's coming. 
It's still, as I said, they're still running a little bit of testing, but you it's know a beta. it's going to be glitch. It's going to be but it's going to get better, and it's going to be wonderful. Yeah, and just to add it, they did have the end train running in the two sections this past weekend. They tell you where the end is running. So it yes. does give you an idea of the accessible reroutes. So they're also testing that out. For, for anyone who has not yet tried the new live map, it's <laughs> map.nba.info. And you uh, can see it on, uh, it's much better on a smartphone than it is on a computer or a tablet, I have to say. Andrew, There's, I put the link in. I just put the link in. It's in the newsletter. I, yeah, okay. Great. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? I'm ready uh, when you are. Oh, uh, Al is back. Uh, Great. We're ready for you, Al. I'm gonna, well, first, I want to thank you guys for having me. Believe it or not, you're my favorite audience because you're most knowledgeable. I give briefings all the time, and you guys are the most knowledgeable audience I ever get to, to talk to. Thank you. And that's that's something I enjoy because you give me challenging questions. <laughs> but more importantly, when I give you answers, you understand them. And sometimes I get questions like, well, why can't we just do it faster? Why do we have to wait? And, and, and some of these are complex questions. If I could just flip a switch and make it happen, I would do it. But that's not the way it works in the real world. So I'm very pleased to be here. So I, I, you want to? I'll share my screen with you so we can go through a presentation. Is that good? That would be great. And thank you so much for your excitement and your enthusiasm and getting this rolled out on a really quick basis. Well, we're working hard. I got a great team. I get all the credit, but I deserve none of it. I've got the best team, the most dedicated staff. These guys, we work around the clock, and I'm not kidding you. I, you I've deserve got folks... it because they're taking their inspiration from you. Well, I got folks that I mean. I work Memorial Day weekend. I never work Memorial Day weekend. And I came in because my staff was coming in. They're like, no, we have to work. I was like, you got to be kidding me. I want to go state and go fishing. But I, I worked because they, they, they worked that hard. All right. So you know what time it is? We it's do. Omni time. Yes. So you don't see my screen, I take it. We see it now. Oh, you do. Good. You do. Okay, good. And I'm going to move my screen over to the other side. Okay. Beautiful. So, new fair payment system update. That's what hey, we're here to Al? Al? Yes, sir. Just for, so you know, for the future, it's permanent citizens with an S. I got Advisory you. committee. I got you. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I got to fix that. Well, you know what? If that's the only mistake I make today, I consider this a home run. Absolutely. So where are we? You guys know what Omni is. I give this presentation to lots of audiences. So we'll go through some of these slides quickly. But it's an open entry. It's an open architecture system. Uh, point of fair collection. We're going to talk about transit first. because Tell transit Your um, screen is blank. Your screen is blank? Yeah. Well, we just see some symbols on the... Uh, oh, there you go. Is that better? There we go. All right, yeah, great. Thank you. So if you want to make it a full screen slideshow too, that would be great. Yeah, that's what I should do. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's see, slideshow, slideshow view. Hey Al, just go back into slideshow. Yeah, yeah slideshow and then slideshow and then from slide. beginning. From beginning. There, there we go. <clears throat> I've been doing meetings in WebEx and it's a different process. So yes. I got to get back to Zoom. All right, so we'll move along. So it's a, what is Omni? Point of entry, fair collection, back office processing. We use open architecture, global industry standards. Why we use open architecture? We want to use APIs, application protocol interfaces so we can link with other agencies, other properties. We want Omni to be regional. We started it out with opening it up open loop payments, bring your own contactless open payment media. What does that mean? It means we avoid the expense of having to provide you with an Omni card. We will provide you with one. We'll go through that as we get in deeper into the presentation. But the concept was get our customers accustomed to bringing their own media. If you start out with a closed loop Omni card, folks will adopt it and they'll be hard to get off it. In the Oyster card in London, still 40% of all the folks that travel in London use the Oyster card. Why? Because it was issued to them. They tied it to a bank account and it lasts for five years. So they're very happy using it. They had no choice. 
the contactless payment industry was not issuing cards at that time. So they had to start with a closed loop product. We did not need to start with a closed loop. We started with an open loop. I, I spoke to the folks at TFL in London and they advised me when we asked them questions about how they would do it today, they said we would do exact, exactly what you're doing now had we had the benefit of open loop. And I get asked that all the time. Why didn't we start with an Omni card? And that's the reason. So open payments, open loop, pay as you go. We will introduce additional products. You know, there's time-based cards, seven day, 30 day. Those products will be introduced with Omni. This is a phase deployment. Uh, we, we develop and design as we go. For example, we're right now, only now at this stage, are we designing the vending machines. We've developed and designed different elements that we could introduce fast and get the biggest bang for the buck. And the biggest bang for the buck is outfit the entire system with readers or validators. We're 90% done with the subway. We're going to launch Queens and Brooklyn buses by the end of this year. We're doing them right now. The plan is to have the entire system wired up with a validator at every payment device, on every door, on every bus, and every turnstile by year end. Is it challenging? You have no idea. We took a 43-day COVID suspension. We got people got sick. We had to stop. We had to develop new work protocols. Uh, it's still impacting our productivity. Cubic has brought in people from three other states, as well as folks from Canada, to assist. We needed to mitigate the delay. We've done that. And we're still we're still getting our, our 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 schedule still on track for completing by the end of the of the end of the year, so we introduce additional products as we move forward. We've got the website up and running. We're going to introduce the app next year, probably sometime around the middle of next year. The app will not only provide payment capabilities but also trip planning, route information, closed loop options. That's the the card the card we're going to introduce ourselves. That card is going to come out. Um, middle of next year, and it's the, it's the basis for the reduced fare card. I know you folks are interested in that. So uh, you, in order to develop a reduced fare option, we need, a, we need the Omni card to be tested and deployed. We haven't got that card tested and deployed yet. We are doing it as we speak. So when we issue the closed loop card to our customers, our general customers, at that time, we're also going to issue it to the reduced fare customers. We're not going to delay any further. We're going to bring you online the exact same time. We're going to start a pilot. The goal is to get 50 closed loop riders today, 50 people that have a reduced fare account that ride a lot. We want to bring you in. We want to test the product with real folks that use our products every day. We did this when we rolled out the open payments. We started with a pilot at 16 stations and the buses on Staten Island. The goal is to get it right and get it right from the start. Other, pro other projects have tried to launch their entire system all in one fell swoop. Boston awarded their contract within a month of us. They're now two years behind schedule. And they tried to do exactly what I said, develop the entire project and launch it all at once. Bad idea. So commuter rails come later in the project, a retail network and out of system sales uh, merchants. We're gonna bring in the big box chains, the drug chains, Walgreens, Rite Aid, CVS. The, the goal is to have them sell an Omni card the Omni card will be the gift card model. If you've ever bought a gift card, you bring it to the cashier and you can put cash on it. You can buy it with a credit card. You can buy it with a debit card. You can bring it back and reload it with cash. You can go on our website or go to our app when we, do, when we uh, release the app next year. You can link the Omni card to a funding account. Some folks are hesitant to use a credit or a debit card in the system. They don't like the idea of using their, their own media. Those individuals can buy an Omni card put cash on it, or they can go online and register it, just like an easy pass to a funding account. It could be credit, it could be debit, it could be ACH, whatever you prefer. Once you've done that, that card will recharge itself just like uh, your easy pass does. And actually just like the Metro Express card does today that doesn't get enough play. That's a Metro card that's attached to a funding source. Commuter rail comes later in the project next year. The commuter rails are very challenging. I know you're interested in them. They're challenging because they operate in a whole different manner. They don't run a gated system. They don't have a tap in or a tap out. And that's what you do typically on a commuter rail. You have a distance-based system. You need to tap in and tap out typically. If it was, if it was up to me and I had an another $100 million, and unlimited real estate, that's what I would have done for the railroads. But you would have to redesign all their stations and give them another 100 million on top of that for hardware and software. That would be ideal. So in order to get around that, we have to do onboard validation. We have to develop specific equipment 
brand new, designed and built just for this project. And that is a challenge. And that's why the railroads are, are brought on a little later. It's just a lot more work. Paratransit was not part of Omni. Um, the decision was made by senior leadership about six or seven years ago uh, that they would go it on their own and they would develop their own interface into the Omni back end. Subsequent to that, back uh, about two years ago, when I took over this project, I was approach, approached by DOB and they said, we, we don't want to change direction. We want you to, uh, to take care of paratransit. So we modified the contract and paratransit is now part of Omni. We awarded that modification in April and 15 months from notice to proceed, notice to proceed, paratransit should come online. Paratransit is going to be a different operation. It's different than Omni. We're not going to need to put validators on thousands of paratransit vehicles. Paratransit is going to take the existing booking system that DOB uses and paratransit uses and API that into the back end of Omni. So when you book a call, you'll be able to book the call as well as charge your account. When you board the paratransit vehicle, all you'll have to do is show ID and the, the, the operator will, will validate that you took that trip and then that will charge your account. You'll still be able to pay with cash, but you'll be able to use your credit card and or your debit card and it will happen without the need of even a validator. And that's good for some folks because not everybody has the ability to reach in their pocket and take out a card and tap it. So it'll be a different approach, but it'll provide the level of seamless account-based transactions that we want. And it's also um, in line with not spending a ton of money on validators and trying to install them in cabs and black cars and accessoride vehicles. So it's an interesting approach and it's the beauty of open architecture and the, the beauty of an account system that we can do something like that. So strategic rollout, defining the customer experience. So I ask my staff all the time, what's the roadmap to success? You know what the roadmap to success is? It starts with one question and one question only. Answer this question and I guarantee you'll be successful. What is the best outcome for the customer? What's the best outcome outcome? come from the customer. Once you've defined the answer to that question, as long as it's doable, both cost and, and, and technology wise, that's the answer to the question. That's what you deploy, what's best for the customer. So it needs to be intuitive. Intuitive means I don't want an instruction book. I don't need to go online and figure out how this works. It's got to be easy, simple, secure, convenient. If you've, if you've checked those boxes, guess what? You're going to say, man, this works. And you know what? It doesn't take much effort for it to work. That's the entire process. Omni should be easy. It shouldn't be hard. Now, to make all that happen, believe it or not, you get involved with what's called UI, UX, user interface and user experience. Now, to make those things happen, that's the hard job. It's not easy to make things intuitive. It's easy to make things complicated. How many times do you go on a website and you're fooling around with that website? You're like, why can't I just do this? And somewhere, not where it should be, is the button you're looking for. Because somebody didn't do their UI, UX. They didn't do it right. Now, I'm not guaranteeing you we're going to get it right 99, 100%, but I'm going to get it 99.9% because that's how hard we work on this. And we bring people in. We do use focus groups. I, I, my wife is the worst. She can screw up anything when it comes to technology. She looks at the TV and it goes blank. So I use my wife. I said, Barbara, if you can make this work, anybody can make it work. And so far, she hasn't broken anything. She's been good. And how do you make sure this all works? I've been married by 38 years, by the way, so I can say that about my wife. She understands me. Test, test, test. When you think you're done with the testing, you know what you got to do? Three more times test it. Three more times. And then maybe you'll get it right. So May 31st, this is our success story. We launched on May 31st. We ran the pilot till December 10th. And guess what? The system worked. No big problems. Yeah, there were back office issues. There were software updates, patches, lots of little things. But guess what? The, the darn thing worked. And I was so proud of the team, Omni. I mean, it, it really stepped it up. So over 1,200 Omni readers were installed at 16 stations. It's actually 19 if you count the complexes. And we finished off all the buses on Staten Island. And it worked. And, and, and that was the basis for how we get to the next level. What's the next level? The next level is stage two, 4,600 subway readers. 12, in the middle of this, they decide Andy Byford. I loved Andy. But you know what he does in the middle of this? Oh, by the way, I, I want to do all door boarding. All door boarding <laughs> wasn't part of Omni. We were just doing the front doors, like 4,000 or 5,000 validators. 
I'm, he introduces his fast forward plan. I'm at the board meeting and I see it's part of the fast forward plan. After the meeting, I says, Andy, not for nothing. This is not part of Omni. He goes, it is now. I said, oh my God. <laughs> so we doubled the workload. We literally doubled it. We went from, from 5,000 and change to over 12,000 bus readers. The articulated buses have three doors. The rest of the buses, except for Express, all have two. So now we had to increase that, that, that workload. So that extended the contract from October to December. We doubled the number of validators and I got Cubic and I negotiated this with them to add only two months to the contract to finish off by year's end. That's, That's why I say buses is challenging. If we can finish off the bus operation by year end, it, it will, it's gonna be sort of a miracle. I mean, I'm being honest. I'm, I'm not changing the schedule, but it's gonna be really hard. We just, just gave them so much more work. On the subway side, we're at 400 and, um, over 400 stations out of the 472. We're, we're close to 90% done in, in subways. So we're definitely gonna nail that. The buses, Brooklyn, and this is, I haven't said this publicly. I'm telling Andrew, you're hearing this for the first time. I'm not gonna say this at the board meeting because so far I'm still, I still can do it. But if anything slips, Brooklyn's gonna wind up being in January instead of December. And I'm, I'm not saying that's gonna happen. I'm saying it's a possibility. And I'm telling you guys, because like I said, you're the real deal, you need to know. But I'm still pushing it. Cubic's working weekends. We flew in 30 additional people. I added staff. So I think we'll make December, but it's that tight. It's, it's like this, My it might be December you. 31st. <laughs> so we had the 43 day work stoppage. Uh, but we mitigated it. We brought our staff back. We brought, we brought, we put in safety protocols. We've got safety managers at every site. They take the employees' temperature. We issue masks, disposable gloves. We issue face shields. We, we instituted distancing on the buses. This is why it's so hard on buses. Typically, guys are working shoulder to shoulder on top of one another. You're doing pre-wiring, validator inst installations, and equipment commissioning. You're right on top of one another when you're doing this. The bus is close quarters. Now I've got to separate these folks. I can't have them work at that level. You ever try and work with them? mask on your glasses fog up your shield fogs up you get thirsty more often you need to take more water breaks all this has impacted us but nevertheless we mitigated it we're back to work and nobody got sick and nobody got hurt and when the day is done that's the most important thing no matter when no matter, no, nobody's going to die on my watch that's what i that's what i can concern myself with even more than schedule so we also took other, other hits. We have field operations we couldn't perform. We had testing in the lab we couldn't perform. 43 days, I'm supposed to be in the lab. I'm supposed to have people doing reader installation tests, software regression tests, OSVD tests, all the things we're supposed to be testing. You know what we're doing? We're sitting home for 43 days. It was brutal. New COVID work safety protocols. So you know we implemented them. That's how we got back to work. So where are we? 411 out of 472 subway stations done with over 3,700 readers. 2666 buses covering all, all boroughs in Staten Island, Brooklyn, and Manhattan. I'm sorry, Bronx and Manhattan done. Over 1,500 readers. We're waiting on two things, Queens and Brooklyn to finish them off. Uh, Staten Island Railway, we have to go back. Uh, no, Staten Island Railway is done. I have to go back to Staten Island because when we did Staten Island, we we're only doing the front doors. All door boarding hadn't been approved yet. So we sent Cubic back to Staten Island and they're adding the all the old door boarding in Staten Island as we speak. So here it is, I get ahead of myself. Queens is next, Brooklyn is next. We turned to Staten Island, I got that. All door boarding technology. All right, so everybody wants to know, when are we gonna do all door boarding? When? Here's the problem with all door boarding. I have to be able to prove how you paid. If yeah. you board with a Metro card or you board with coin, I don't have a way of verifying it. There's no way for me to be able to have anybody check you and say, yeah, you paid. I can't scan the Metro card and I don't have a receipt if you paid with coin. So I need to be able to do proof of payment. So the way all door boarding works, it's supposed to work. I don't have coin and I don't have Metro card. I just have Omni. We have an OVD, onboard validation device. The inspector shows up and he says, how did you pay? You say, I use my credit card. He takes his device and he pushes a button and NFC, near field communication, scans that device from uh, your payment source to my device. Or you take out your phone. You say, I use my phone. We do the same thing. And bingo, we can prove you paid. Now I have proof of payment and I can do all door boarding all day long. So until we figure out when we're going to be able to eliminate coin and Metro card, and I can tell you when, I don't have to figure it out, July of 2023, that's for sure, if not sooner. But that's the drop dead date that you'll be able to use all doors on regular bus service. Now, SBS is a different animal. SBS provides a receipt. If you pay off board with your Metro card 
or your coin right now, you get a ticket. You show that ticket to the inspector and that's how you prove payment. When you board with Omni, we will use the onboard validation device to inspect and verify your media. It's your debit, your credit, or your phone. So we can do it on SPS and guess what? It's on SPS. As we've rolled out Staten Island, well, they don't do SPS on, they don't do all the more you got on Staten Island, but Brooklyn, I'm sorry, uh, Bronx and Manhattan, SPS is active right now on the board, 100%. So all customers can pay with Omni and they can use the SPS route. Somebody's got to mute. But the RBS, I want to get out in front of this. Right now, the RBS, regular bus service, I just can't institute proof of payment on RBS yet. And when Andy introduced this, believe me, I almost fell out of my chair because he did not fully understand what all door boarding meant. He understood they did it in London. He got it. They did it in London. Ironically, London, London discontinued their all door boarding in January. You know why? Massive fare evasion. Massive. So they discontinued it. Andy went back there. I haven't talked to him lately, but I'd like to call him and ask him how that old board is working out because he left me with it for RBS and it's going to be challenging. But there is a path forward. We just have to take the necessary steps. So we talked about COVID and touchless. Folks like not to touch things. I like not, not to touch things. Omni allows you to ride our system without touching things. And I think that's a positive. Is MetroCard unsafe? No. No, I, I don't believe MetroCard's unsafe because you can sanitize, you can use wipes, there's hand sanitizer, you can use it on your MetroCard. But let's be honest, if I don't have to touch things, I like that even better. And that's what, that's what Omni does. You know, we're shutting the system down to 1 to 5 a.m. Unfortunately, ridership, it took a real beating. We were down 90%, 90% uh, in April. I think we're down around 60% now. We were carrying 8 million people a year. I guess now we're doing around uh, 3 million combined bus and, and, and subway. But the good news is Omni's growing. We've hit 25 million taps this week. Uh, the growth on Omni is around 1% a month. We were at 4.4 in February, now we're at 9%. What that means 9% of the customers that use our system that's Omni enabled, obviously, are switching from MetroCard to Omni. Now, what, where do I see that headed? Those numbers are gonna exponentially double as soon as we finish off bus and subway. Because right now people, can't necessarily get a free transfer if they use Omni and both ends of their journey don't have Omni enabled readers. So once we finish the system off at the end of this year, I think you're going to see that, that really skyrocket. 73% of our transactions are phone based. Why is that? Why aren't people more using contactless? I'll tell you why. Ride the bus, ride the train. Eight out of 10 people are doing what? They're playing tiddlywinks on their phone. They're talking to somebody if they have service. Everybody's on their phone. So it just makes sense to put your credit card in your mobile wallet. And while you're using your phone, use it to pay. It's super convenient. Also gives you the ability to go on our website and look up your transactions. And you can look without even registering your account. You could see your last seven days. If you register your account, it, it goes back 60 or 90. I'd have to check, but it's either 60 or 90 days. And that gives you the opportunity to keep all your individual transactions in one place. Unlike your credit card statement, every time you ride, your credit card statement is going to indicate a transaction on the date you took the trip. So if it's a 30-day uh, statement, you're going to see trips here, trips here, trips here, all, all different spots. And they'll be buried amongst your other transactions. If you go on our website and you look up your card, bingo, all in one place, time, date, location. Very easy to manage. So cash at New York City Transit. This is where we're going with this in terms of getting to a point where we can do uh, an RBS, SBS treatment, uh, all door boarding. Today, 12% of our customers are unbanked. They're not going to have a credit card. They're not going to have a debit card. And they're certainly not going to have a funding source in their mobile device. So we need to deal with that. And we will. In system, we have MVMs in stations. And we also have mobile sales vans today. We have a retail network with 1,800 locations. These are mostly mom and pop shops, bodegas, newsstands, and we take cash on board buses, coin. It's very, it's, it's, it's not a significant portion of our revenue. Overall, cash on buses is around 5%, 6%. However, if you're part of that individual that needs to pay with cash, it's a big deal. And that's the problem. It may not, some people say it's a small amount. Guess what? If you're part of that small amount, it's a problem. So we need to address it. So how do we address it? This is the roadmap. Cash in an Omni environment. First off, we're going to put system in-system CVMs in our stations. 
First, we're going to do the retail network, but we are going to put machines in. We're going to remove the Metro card machines, and you'll have a CVM that will allow you to buy several different options. You'll be able to buy an Omni card, which would be a card that's like a credit card. It'll last five years. You could buy a limited use card, which is a paper smart card, which you could use for a single ride. You could also buy a ticket that's valid on the railroad. It'll be that same paper ticket with a chip in it. And you'd be able to buy a railroad commutation product from New York City Transit and vice versa. The railroads will also sell products that are uh, interoperable at New York City Transit. Now, we don't, we don't have that today. But the key to the whole thing is the retail network. Our goal and our contract with, uh, with Cubic and their sub, a company called Incom, they run the gift card models in the drug chains. Like I said, Rite Aid, Walgreens, CVS. There's 4,000 of them in the five boroughs. They are going to have that gift card model in those 4,000 chains. In addition, I'm going to provide the 1,800 locations that we, I'm not going to shut out the bodegas and the mom and, dot, mom and pop shops that have been loyal to us all these years. We're going to bring them online too. They're going to have to sell it a little different. They don't have the technology that the drugstores have, but there's still a way for them to market and sell a pre valued card. And we're going to let them do it. So if you have that many locations where literally within a couple blocks of every single bus stop, there's a spot where you can buy an Omnicard and put cash on it. That's when you could say to your cash customers, I solved your dilemma. You don't have to go and load up on quarters and dimes and nickels and, and dump out your piggy bank anymore. You can go to the drugstore and you can buy a card with cash. And it's very convenient. Even in locations where there are no subways, there are drugstores every quarter mile. That's, that's the goal to have four blocks, not more than four blocks from a bus stop, someplace for you to buy an Omni card. When we do that, and only when we do that, will we be able to remove cash from buses. So looking ahead, we talked a little bit about the reduced fare program. I have to have the physical Omni card available to make a reduced fare customer uh, whole, to give them a card they can use. Now, there's a couple of options here. These are policy options, though. In theory, you could avoid the need for that card. We could put a credit card in your account link it, uh, one, one card only, link it to an account and say, okay, every time you use this credit card or this debit card or your mobile device, you're only going to get charged half fare. But you'd have to provide an ID now. How do you ID that person to know that, that like I'm 66, I could give my card to my son. How do I prove he's not me? Well, now you have another, another problem. You need a document you have to carry to prove you're Al Petray and you're really entitled to this half fare. Well, I'm not saying we're not going to do that. I'm saying it's a challenge. I'm looking at it. I would like to do it. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can. It's a board question, really. And it's a policy decision. And I say it's a board question because it's going to affect the tariff. But even before I can bring it to the board, I have to make certain I haven't built a policy that's going to cause a fraudulent uh, situation that we then have to mitigate another way and maybe take it away. And I never want to do that. I don't want to introduce something that doesn't work. So I'm just giving you open-ended ideas. The original plan calls for me to issue you an Omni card with your photo on it, similar to a Metro card today. And that card will allow you several options. You could put uh, a funding account, attach it, your bank account, your credit, your debit. You could uh, put cash on it. Just give you that option. You could put cash on it. So you'll never have to worry about, you know, Will I be able to use it like I use it today? It will do even more than what it does today. However, when does it happen? And this is the part of the story you're not going to like. I can't introduce it for you until I have it in general. And I won't have it in general until later next year. So we're looking at a pilot, the actual uh, pilot starting uh, in six, June of 2021. Next year, middle of the year. Now, I know it's not tomorrow. I wish it was tomorrow. And, and it's unfortunate, but these things do take time and they are built in stages. We design what we need, we build it, we move on. And that's how this was developed. Open payments were done first. Why? Open payments first were the easiest way to get the largest adoption in customer base that we could possibly get and minimize our operating expenses. And right now, if you can get the most benefit for the least ex expense, especially in the environment we're in today, that's the only decision you could make. And we did. The Omni Retail Network comes online in July of 21. It's a process. These guys have windows 
the way they work in these in these drug changes, you just can't walk in and say, oh, we want you to start selling this card. They have these three month windows and you have to do an entire segment of introduction only during these windows. And each chain has their own windows. So we have to compartmentalize our deployment to fit in with these schedules. So we get into their, their business model. And that's when that starts. And the CVM start going in as well. We're designing the CVMs as we speak. I've been in all day design meetings. I helped design the MetroCard machine. I'm proud of some of the things that I brought to the table on that. And some of the things we're working on now, so you should know. We're not gonna give out Susan B. Anthony's anymore. We're not gonna give out Sacagawea's anymore. We're done with that. Bill note recyclers, BNRs will dispense one and $5 bills. The machine will recycle the bills that customers put in. Right now, 60% of all the bills we receive are $1 bills. And I wanna give them right back to the customers if possible. I don't wanna be loading in tens of millions of dollars in silver dollars and accepting tens of millions of dollars of single dollars, which is how we operate today. Very inefficient. So we're building a new machine. It's gonna have additional capacities. It should be far more reliable and hopefully we're gonna eliminate all the scams we were faced with today um, relative to individuals scamming us on time-based cards and selling swipes. That's one of my pet goals. If I could do that before I leave, I would consider that to be the crown jewel of my career. 20 years I've been fighting this and I haven't figured it out yet, but I think Omni's got it knocked. Mobile ticketing. So we need something on the railroads and, and the railroads come later in a project, but Etix, we're going to replace their Etix app with our own app. This will allow you to use a barcode and a sign up for a monthly ticket. Um, replace the joint ticket that the railroads use today with Long Island Railroad, New York City Transit, and Metro North. We have this joint mail and ride program. We won't need that anymore. You'll be able to do this all online. <clears throat> the Omni ticket is a limited use media. That's how the railroads will function. They will use a limited use media, a chip based product for their, for their riders that. Um, cur currently use a ticket that gets punched. And that ticket will be read electronically via the OSVD. They have cons configurable vending machines like we do. Uh, New York City Transit is getting 1,600 machines. Metro North, 278. And Long Island Railroad gets 302. So we're going to have cons configurable vending machines systemically on all our properties. And you'll be able to buy media on any of those, from any of those machines that will work interoperably across our agencies. They also have a ticket office machine. They have, they have, they still have ticket offices and they're going to have some ticket offices in the future. So we built a machine for them there. The onboard sales validation device allows them to validate tickets. And also if need be in the oddball situation where machines are broken at a station, we can even sell tickets on board to customers. The goal is not to sell on board. The goal is to provide off board sales, but in the event they needed to, we have the capability. And that happens back. That happens in January of 2022. Um, we'll be running pilots on all of these things. And the overall concept here is what? Test, 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 get it right. July of 2023, MetroCard gets retired. Say goodbye. It was 25 years. It was a good run. I won't be here for that party. My, my, my retirement party is a lot sooner than that. So I'll, I'll be going myself very shortly, but not yet. I still got a few things to do. So I hope you enjoyed my, my presentation. I enjoy giving it. I know you probably have questions. I hope I have answers. Thank you so much, Al. This is really great. And your enthusiasm is contagious. Well, nobody um, does presentations like me. That's what everyone says. Nobody. You know what I tell them? I say it's a good thing because I don't think I could take more than one of me. I think you need a cold compress right now. But <laughs> let me ask you this. Um, you had the, uh, the March of 2021 and the June of 2021 for various uh stages of the Omnicard is the, I, I, is the, um, I noticed the, the June was the reduced fare payment version of the Omnicard. When is the time-based one? Is that March or is that also June? So the time-based card will be, will be, uh, we're going to have a fare increase in March. So I don't want to do anything between now and March. So after the fare increase in March, I think would be the best bet for our, it, it's, it's too difficult for me to try and figure out what fare the board's going to pick and do all this work for, for just a month. So after the fare increase in March, then we'll introduce it. We could do it in April, May, June, any, any of those months. Got it. I just need to know what it is. And um, I've, been, I've been testing out um, various readers and it, it's great. They, they're so much better than they were in the beginning, but I'm wondering, does an Omni reader lose its, um, What's the, what's the word I'm searching for? It's, um, 
it's alignment. I mean, if, what if was it's the old enough. What was the condition you noticed that made you think something happened? Um, whereas I was able to pretty much tap anywhere, um, mm -hmm. I actually got a few, you know, tap agains, and I had to tap absolutely straight on it. So I'm wondering if they lose their alignment after a, no, or after a period. No, they don't. They don't. No, in, in theory, they don't lose their alignment, but in practice, things do happen. And uh, what I would suggest is a couple of things. When you when you tap your card, you always tap a single card. You don't leave it in your wallet. You never hold it next to any other cards. Correct. Correct. And you, you always put it more or less in the middle. Right. Then it should work every time without an issue. When you get the next time you get a location where it's it's funky like that. Um, Take a picture of it with your phone or something. Yep, yep. And we'll diagnose it. Uh, we are having, on average, somewhere along the line of about 40 to 50 uh, validators go in for service. Um, and it is a brand new piece of equipment. And as I said, like everything else, we're still making changes to them. So also depending on the time, uh, we had just, we, we downloaded new software to all the validators in, we're in October, in September. And that software fixed several different things in terms of processing, not necessarily processing speed, uh, but, but other elements of the validator that could affect when the, pro, when, the, when the validators were taking those updates, it could affect their performance because while they're taking updates, they do slow down, but they, they, they're not supposed to go out of service. They okay. Should still work. Um, yeah. Um, was this in March? I have one more. I mean, was, it, was this last month in September? Yes. Okay. That makes sense. Because like I said, we, we, we downloaded a bunch of things. Um, just specifically on the subway validators and the bus validators. And we're going to be doing this continually. This is a never ending battle. This, these software patches and updates, it never ends. It's like you're right. Let me ask you one more question and then I'll open it up because I see Chris has his hand up already. Um, we just obviously passed a procurement for Cubic for the commuter rails uh, to uh, accept Omni and to do that work. Is it, is it your, I think you mentioned it in your speech, but Conductors will have special Omni readers that will be able to. Uh, to the OSVD. Uh, They'll have the yeah. onboard sales validation device that we, we are building just for the railroads. Okay, now, will when somebody purchases an Omni commuter rail ticket and they do it, and I'll use a hypothetical, from Penn Station to Valley Stream, if, if they were to ride past Valley Stream to Merrick, would the conductor and the equipment the conductor will have understand that they're riding further than they paid for? Yes. When you buy a ticket on the railroad, it, it tells you that the ticket gets um, accounted for your start and your end destination. So when you scan that ticket, it will know exactly where you ah, bought it and, and, and the fare and where you paid and what you're supposed to pay and when you're supposed Excellent. to get off. Great, thank you so much. Uh, Chris, I know you were first with your hand up. <laughs> yes, I do, because I have something when he said earlier, it's Omni time. <laughs> and we I, saw I that promise, earlier. Yes, I promise, because I promised Reggie Barron to do that to you, Al. I appreciate and that. You know, somebody in my staff in the press office has a phone and she gets a text, right? And she goes, listen to this, and it's me. She used me as our, as our text <laughs> message. I said, man, you need to get a life. That's not good. No, he has a life, trust me. I have a life. but No, Al, I don't mean you. I mean her. She's I got know. that on her phone. Yeah. Uh, Al, I have a couple questions. Um, one thing that I, and I have to say, it was very, I always love your presentations on the Google and everything else. Because I have to say, it's a, it's a, a nice and fresh air on that. The concern, there, there are some concerns with the uh, half fare because as you know, we have wheelchairs, you know, as a member of the uh, ACT member, as well as Edith Prentice and I are also on the Long Island River ADA task force. We hope you could be tested on these, let's reduce fare, that's one. So you'll get part, you'll be part of the pilot. I got yes. 50 folks I have to enroll and I need both senior citizens and I need disabled folks. And oh, I'm going to exactly. also tell you, we're installing auto gates. All the auto gates are being installed now. I'm going to have them well in, uh, they'll be in by March of next year, long before I even get the card to use them. We're also working with Alex Ella Gooden and now a new board member, um, 
Khaleesi, Mr. Khaleesi. The, the disabled folks and how we can accommodate them with, with our new elevators, our ESI elevator deployment. Uh, and, and believe me, I'm getting pressure like you, you won't believe the pressure I'm getting to get this done. And I, I try to, I try to explain, look, the contract's laid out in a format. I can't say, no, we're going to skip these other steps and go and do this. It's, it's a process, but I and wish I could, because man, the pressure's mounting. Yeah. Just so you know, the heat is hot. Yes. Yeah, we can it's see that. Heat to cool weather, Al. Just to add one thing, if I have, a, let's say, if I did get the half year Omni in my hand, can I also energize it on a computer? Because last time we spoke, yes, you said yes. you could do it also on the computer. You could you could do it from the computer. Or you could do it from your phone. All you need to do is log on to Omni.info, type in the number on that card, and then link it to a funding source, your credit card, your debit card, or your ACH. Any and of I them. Is that with the motor? Uh, how about, is that including also the order gate as well? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the last part. Yeah, order gate. Like a person oh, you're okay. Yes, it, that's all. All included. All of the all the disabled functions. Th that card will open. All, that's the only card yeah. that'll open up the auto gate as it's currently programmed. Okay. Is that including leaving the transit system too? Yes, both. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Alex. Thank you. I am. Thank you. And Edith, Edith, uh, Edith, has Edith, a, Edith has a question. I have a question. Um, I know Matt Andy Pollock has and, and then Andy Pollock. So let's go Edith, me, Edith. Matt, Andy, okay? Edith. Edith, you're muted. I'm unmuted now. Okay, my question was, um, what is the actual time frame? Will there be a gap on the auto gates between the butterflies and between the standard door and the butterflies. When you say a gap, when the, I'm not following the question. When the auto gate opens oh. up, right? It, it separates. No, 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 no. Functionally, right now we have auto gates. How long does it take them to change an auto gate to a butterfly? Will that, will that station be out of not working while that process is okay, happening. Okay, so it, Omni, my, here's what I do. I install the validator or the reader on the gate that allows Omni to open or close the gate. In terms of the gate itself, that's Jano. That's a construction and design function. I am unfortunately not involved in that at all. So I can't answer your question. That's, we don't, we have, I don't install those gates. The right. new gates you're referring to. I don't install those wait, gates. Wait, I will retrofit wait. that gate or install the validator on it to actuate the gate. I'm sorry, but that's just not part of the Omni project. We okay. don't, we don't, we don't design the new gates. Okay. So we're basically at the uh, mercy of being caught between two systems. No, because as soon as they change, I will put the validator on that gate the day they install that gate, I'll make certain that that gate's in service. We'll have our team there waiting to install okay. the validator on that gate. That's how we operate. I will make okay. certain I'm there, but I just can't tell you when it's going to happen or what location because I have to, they give me a schedule and they say, we're making these installations. We need Omni readers. And I, I make certain those Omni readers are installed. Okay. Because at, at this point in time, the gates are not opening automatically. And we've been told that's because the system's being changed. It has nothing to do with me. Nothing I mean, to do with you. Okay, no. fine. Thank you. Nothing to do with me. Um, okay. Thank you. But I, you know what I'm going to do now, though? Now that you brought that up, I'm going to find out who's running that project and see what the hell they're doing. Because if they're causing, me, if they're yeah. causing problems that you're going to perceive as my problems, then I'm going to fix them for him. <laughs> I don't want them perceived as my problems. That's great, Al. Thank you. The problem is the gate is heavy. And to open the gate at the way it is with these new gate, it, it's it's problematic. Thank you very much. It's the butterfly gate that's the problem. No, it's the, the other. The current the gates aren't opening automatically, which they used to do. You would dip your your access card in, and the gate would open. And many of them don't at the moment. All right. So you have to have specific strength to pull that gate open. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Edith. I'm gonna jump in and then yes. I'll see if any other members have a question before we go to Matt uh, and Andy and Matt. 
Right. Um, Al, you said that you didn't want to start, um, that you didn't want to start, uh, do, that there's going to be a change in fares in March. So you want to um, wait until that happens. So how easy or difficult is it to change the fares on Omni? It's, it's a, some, I would think that's a back-end op operation. Yep. yep, it's all back-end. It's not hard to do, but the deal is this. Right now, we have no time-based products in, installed at all. We're just doing Paygo, right? Right. So what we're going to do is we're, we're putting in the software now to do a time-based pass, and I'm going to test various ways in which we can manipulate the fares and, and, and see how long it takes to get downloaded and make sure everything works. And by the time they decide on what fare they want, I'll be ready to do whatever it is they need to do. Oh, that's terrific. Thank you. Including eventually, but I know that um, fair policy is board, board, is a board decision. So well, anything but, like but, fair capping, et cetera, would be. Oh, fair capping is a $200 million hit. So I think that's going to have to sit for a little while. Okay. Thank you. I see um, that Stuart um, has a question. Yes, Stuart. Hi, very briefly, Al. Has there been any vandalism of the uh, card readers? Yes, there has. Is it we've had We've is had approximately 10 vandals attack our validators and we've arrested several people. We had a woman hitting him with a, a, a heavy chain. We had a man using a hammer, uh, a bat. Uh, when we had these groups that were doing those protests before COVID, um, they attacked the validators. They saw the validators, I guess, as a sign of uh, fair collection that they could break. Interestingly enough, they shattered the validators. They completely broke, that's Gorilla Glass. It takes a, I, I, I watched a video, uh, uh, it took three shots to break one with a hammer but they finally did. But interestingly enough, the validator never went out of service. It was completely <laughs> shattered. In fact, all of them were completely shattered because here's what I would do. I would say, I want to catch this guy, find out when it broke. So I would have them look into the, the, the records to see when it stopped working. It never stopped working. <laughs> the damn thing was working. You could still tap even though the entire glass was shattered. So it made it harder for me to decide when this actually happened. I wish it had broken. Because I'd say, okay, at 4.03 a.m., it went out of service. That's what, at 4.02, let's look at the video or something, see what's going on. So we've had about 10 of them in system. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any other members who had a question? Okay, Matt Schottkin was, had his hand up, and then and Andy Pollack, and then Matt Camper, and then... Uh, I like your present. I loved your presentation, Al. And... Uh... I was thinking that, do you mean to tell me that if I have a reduced fare card that I can't use it for six months? No. Or, or an Omni card? No, no, no. You're going to use your Metro card. And then starting next year, um, in July, we're going to run a pilot. And that pilot, we're going to put 50 folks in that use both the disabled community and senior citizens and they're going to use an Omni card and test it out. And that pilot's going to run until September of next year. And then September of next year, we're going to give you an Omni card to replace your Metro card. So you will have either your Metro card or a new Omni card at all times. You'll do, there'll be no period of time when you're going to be not having something. Okay. Thank you, Al. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, uh, Andy Pollack, you had your hand up. Yes, Lisa. Um, good afternoon, Al. This is uh, Andy Pollock from Passengers United. Um, first of all, Andrew remembers this flawed. Um, I want to apologize for calling you Dave back in February when we brought you up in sentence. But um, yeah, we're, we're very excited with the Omni project. It's um, looking like everything's going on schedule. Um, one question I would like to ask is it possible when the readers get installed in Queens, you could do a demonstration on the Q46 bus, particularly at the Long Island Jewish bus stop? It's possible. I'm not saying I'm going to do it, though. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> well, I, I so hope many... it's somewhere in Queens. I, I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, I, I, I'm... Queens is going to be in the end of the year, and, and right. it's going to be tight, but I guarantee you... Uh, well, I do it like at least two events a month. And generally, every time we could finish off a borough, I do something in that borough. I did the Bronx at 149th Street and Grand Concourse twice. I just did it again last week. Um, and I'll, I'll do something in Queens, I guarantee it, and something in Brooklyn. Because you could also do a Q Gardens Union Turnpike and not necessarily have to be Long Island Jewish. I got you. 
You know right. who decides that though? See, I don't get to decide that. The, the people that run the press office, they tell me where to go and when to be there. And then they tell the reporters when to get there. And then I just show up. I don't I don't ever say, oh, I want to do this at Roosevelt Avenue. They may oh, do so it's up to the Avenue. press office then. You, you got to talk to Abby Collins. She'll, if she, if you tell Abby you want me yes. to be somewhere or Tim Minton, then I'll go. <laughs> I can reach out to Abby Collins since I am uh, the public advisor. So there I will you go. do that. Tell you want, you, you want Al over there at Kew Gardens. I like Kew Gardens because I live in, in, in Middle Village, Queens. Which oh, is really? A, a so I guess, I guess I should directly ask for Kew Gardens. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we, we, could, we could do the Austin Street. That's closer. I could walk there. Okay. Oh, Austin Street from 71st Avenue. There you okay. go. Yeah, I've been in Queens all my life. life. So, we don't really okay. need to. We need to move on to our next question. Um, oh, we have Matt you. Camper Thanks and then Aliyah. Much, I'm sorry about Aliyah, Aliyah after Matt Camper. Okay, good afternoon, Al. Uh, a couple Matt. of questions I have. Um, first of all, um, I uh, live on Long Island and um, I take a um, nice bus um, a lot. Um, I'm a nice bus rider and I know. Um, there's been a lot of talk about it's going to be, um, especially with the PAP trains that use Metro cards, uh, the um, and nice bus. Um, do you have any update as to when um, if PAP is going to get the? Yep. Um, yep. I'll get, let me give you the story. Nice bus, and if so, when? I got the whole story for you. Rick Cotton is the uh, executive director of of PATH, and Rick and I have met on more than one occasion. And Rick would like PATH to accept Omni like three years ago, even before I was here. So I get the message. PATH is off. We have what we call affiliates. Affiliates are agencies that depend on MetroCard. So our biggest affiliate is PATH. We have Nice Bus, I think is probably number two. We have Beeline Westchester Bus. We have the tram that runs to Roosevelt Island. And we have lots of other customers that want to join Omni. So the way it works is this. The back end, the, the cubic, the, the back end that processes, the account-based processor, has to be built out in stages, just like everything else. So the first stage was 275 pay go. The next stage, time-based passes, then reduce fare customers along with them. And then we need to bring in, in 2022, the affiliates, because we are going to decommission MetroCard. Once we decommission MetroCard, the affiliates, your nice bus, the path, they do not have a fare collection system. They depend on MetroCard. So all the affiliates will subscribe to Omni. The path will be the first one because they're the biggest. And Rick Cotton, he he makes the most noise, to be honest. So he's going to get the first guy. And also him and him and him and Pat have worked together for years. And we recognize that Path is our biggest affiliate. So you got to give the biggest guy, he's got to get online first. And he is. And you're Next both is nice bus. Cubic. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Cubic already has uh we when we left the contract for uh Omni, what we did is we built in competitive pricing for all the affiliates. We anticipated that the affiliates were going to need to buy hardware uh, that would that would allow them to avail themselves of Omni. They need machines in some cases. They definitely need va validators and readers. So we had them bid on that competitively. We mm -hmm. had four vendors compete for this business. And because it was a competitive procurement, we availed ourselves of this pricing that we got as part of our overall procurement. So they will have the ability to buy the exact same hardware that we bought at the exact same price we negotiated competitively. Had we not done that, and you would send Cubic in to see Pat and in to see Rick Cotton now, and they had no agreements, I guarantee you Cubic would be charging a lot more money than what they charged us on a competitive procurement. So we tried to make... Um, we tried to make it available for our affiliates at a reasonable rate. Now they will have to spend money on NRE, non-recurring engineering. There are engineering costs that they'll need for their system to work with our system, but that's outside of the purview of Omni. Omni will provide all the hardware and all the APIs uh, into our back end to allow all the affiliates to function with us. And Matt, to just answer your question, sometime in 2022, I wouldn't say not, I would say mid to late 2022, we're gonna bring Path Online. And right after path, nice bus. Okay, great. And um, one other question I had was, uh, I'm a reduced fare Metro card holder, and I also have a contactless credit card, a uh, debit card, I'm sorry. Um, and um, am I going to be able to um, use my contactless debit card with the reduced fare Metro card um, with Omni once it, uh, reduced fare Metro cards are enabled in, sometime in 2021? So what you'll do is, You'll take your Omni card, you'll go onto our website, Omni.info, you'll turn your Omni card over, and you'll type in the serial number on the back of that card. 
Once you type in the serial number on the back of that card, you'll register it. You'll put your name to it, and then you'll add your credit card. Once you've done that, you're good. Everything you do on your Omni card will then be linked to your credit or debit card, and payments will function without you having to reload that card or do anything more to it. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Stuart, did you have another question? Okay. Uh, we have Aliyah or Aliyah. I'm, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name. Um, hi, um, uh, what an excellent uh, informative session. My name is Alia Hussain and I'm the chair of Kipling's Family Support Advisory Council. We are a big advocate on a special needs population in Queens. Uh, and uh, I'm really glad that I joined uh, the meeting uh, because of Chris, uh, he gave us a link to connect to you. Uh, my question to Al is, uh, what will be the status of the accessor ride MTA card? And as you know that the first four uh, rides with the P, uh, PA is free, but what will happen to the next uh, ride? Will that be also, uh, we can do it on the credit card? So the way paratransit works is we awarded a modification. Paratransit was not part of the Omni project originally. So back in April, we were asked to take on this project. So we awarded a modification uh, to our contract to allow Omni to address the paratransit system. And how we did that is um, pretty cool. What we did is this. Rather than try and install readers or validators on all of our paratransit vehicles and all the um, cab services, et cetera, we looked at leveraging our back end. The Cubic back end can uh, be API'd or application protocol interfaced into the DOB, Department of Bus system that they use to book and record all of their trips. So all a customer will need to do in the future is when you book your trip, you establish an account or give them your credit card. You could do one of two things. You could establish an account and you don't have to give it to them again, or you can just give them the credit card number over the phone like you do when you buy anything. And they'll plug that in. When you actually take the ride, only when you take the ride will you be charged. So if the accessor ride never shows up or you change your mind, there'll be no charge. But when you board, you're going to have to show ID. And once you show ID when you board, the operator will validate that you took that ride. At that point, your, your journey's paid for. Now, the mechanics of all that, I, I'm giving you a high level overview. We're designing this, we only awarded this back in April. So it's gonna be deployed sometime in the middle of next year. We're, we're actually, I had an all day design meeting yesterday on this. I did not attend it. I was involved with it for a period of time, but I had two of my engineers involved with it for the entire day. So we're designing the system architecture right now for Accessoride. And it will be part of Omni and it's scheduled to get deployed sometime in the middle of next year. As far as policy goes on how we charge you, what rides are free, what rides aren't free, you got to talk to Andrew about that. That's his job. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was very detailed. Thank you. Um, Matt, you can be the last question, I guess. Okay. Uh, Al, can you use the Omni card with a branch bank card? As long as it's contactless. So what you got to do is you got to take the card and you got to look at it. And here's how you'll know. Most of the cards now are all contactless. I mean, it's very rare to find one that isn't. But if you look at a card and you see this little emblem over here, this emblem yeah. I'm pointing to here, can you yeah. see that? If you yeah. have that emblem on your card, that means it's a contactless card. And that means that all you have to do is tap and go. Okay. Okay, yeah, Al, thank you. You're very welcome. Well, Al, this is really exciting. Um, thank you so much for this presentation. No, thank you. I, I told you I love you guys. You're the best audience I get to present to. I we appreciate that. And I mean, you know, we appreciate you, the whole you, idea of contactless you, payment. You, it's fabulous. Especially uh, now. We wish thank you the you, best Alan. of luck. My pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. I made this thank you so much. Now. All right, guys. Omni time. I got, some work. I got some work. I got to go do some Omni work. Take care. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. My pleasure. I want to eat lunch. Uh, are there any other issues uh, that we need to address before we adjourn? Because it's almost adjourn time. 
Uh, Andrew, it's Stuart. Um, yes, Stuart. In the minutes of the last meeting, I had asked a question uh, during the meeting about the uh, masks that are on sale in the vending machines. Did we ever get any data back from the authority on that? I don't believe we did. Okay. Uh, we'll ask again, though. Thank you. Yep. Me, Making yeah. a note. What exactly? What did you want to know about those masks? You know, I want to know if people are utilizing the machines and and whether um, <laughs> you know they they're they're reaching any audience. You know what the experience is. We will get you an answer. They're in um they're in all of the systems now though. <laughs> I know. Well, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I know. That's why I want to know. Right. Whether it's are doing they being, anything. Yeah. Are they being right. purchased? Yeah. Right. Utilized. Yeah. Right. See, um, Christopher has his hand raised. Yeah, I have also some of the old business too, but I was glad Stuart did mention about that. But the only question that I'm getting from people, even looking at my email now, is that thing you have to pay for those machines? And I don't mask for the mask. That means you just proved me right. But you'll be nice so. There, are, there are two different ways to get masks. If you're yeah. in the subway, at the uh, if there's a if there's a, a token a booth agent, you can get a, a free mask from them. Yeah. If it's unstaffed, you have to go to the side or the entrance where there is, um, yeah. where there is an agent, and you get them for you get the mask for free. Yeah. If you go to the machines, uh, and, and there are bus disp dispensers, there are dispensers on some buses where you can also get them for free. Yes, if you I go to one of the PPE machines, you have to pay. Do you know how much? Uh, it how varies much? by machine. I think it varies by what you're what you're buying. One washable mask. Let's how just much? say. Don't no idea. Can right, you that, find out, please? If it could, is it be possible, can we find out? Because people don't see the prices, or I'm guessing some of the things. Yeah, the question is, why would you buy one when they're being given out free at the booths, unless you're at a place without a booth? That's right. That's right. right. And, and also, some really people true. cannot use the paper mats because there's certain there's a, a, it irritates them. So they want the cotton mask because it's easier like the one I'm wearing right now. That's why. See? One I'm I would prefer cotton. I can't handle paper. I get sick. Okay. And, and let me tell you, Andrew, a lot of these people, when you do the mass force, they love grabbing the washables. They don't want to see those paper ones because they risk yeah. passing in a heartbeat. I agree. So, I like uh, KN95. Well, those are not in the machines. Believe me, they're not. Um, Matt Shotkin has uh, his hand raised. Chris, um, next time I see one, Christopher, I'll also, I'll just go up to one. But if you see one, also. If I do, I'll let you know as well. Either Great. Way. Or if anybody sees one, you know, feel free to report in. That would be terrific. Thank you. Matt, you'll probably be the last one. You said that before. I know. You seem to be I the last one. I'm talking about there's two meetings in a row. Two meetings in a row, but. Last Monday, there was another woman in Times Square who was pushed out to the tracks. Why does this always happen, Andrew? Why what? Say that Why again. Why does that always happen? Somebody gets it doesn't, doesn't always track. happen, Matt, or, or, we, or you'd see nothing else but that on the news. It's rare, but it happens, and you have to be aware of your surroundings and who's around you. That's the key. Because there aren't as many people around the yet. The key is that you have to be aware of, of who's around you. And are the board yes, meetings that's the key. Are the Matt, board your, your, your audio is going in and out. Online, like Lisa's meeting here? I'm, I'm missing that. Sir, are the meetings here virtual? Looks like Lisa's meetings are here. All of the meetings, the board meetings are all virtual and they're held on, on Wednesdays now. There's no committee meetings. Right, they're um, joint committee board meetings. Right, but, but you can, if you wanted to testify or, or um, provide testimony, either spoken or not, that's on Mondays. Okay, okay, so thank you. And I, don't, I don't know if, if Andrew or Kate, if you have any, any further information, but I would anticipate it will be well into next year before there are any in-person meetings. That, I'm uh, guessing the same. Yeah, okay. What the year after? Yep. Well, everybody, thank you so much. Take Stay a safe. Turn. And um, we will <laughs> see you next <laughs> month. And do not forget, move your clocks back an hour Sunday night. Indeed.
David. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Peace. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.